Greetings from the Jazz Cloud. I'm Richie Zalon, and I'd like to welcome you to the Jazz Guitar Channel. I don't know about you, but the very first recording I heard by John McLaughlin was with the Mahavishnu Orchestra way back when I was in high school. And I remember thinking, this guy must be from another planet. Well, it so happens that a couple of years later, I moved to San Francisco and joined a meditation group under Guru Sri Chinmoy. Two prominent musicians were also part of this group. And I'm talking about Carlos Santana and yes, that guitarist from another planet, John McLaughlin. At the time I was starting to listen to bebop and I remember picking John's brain about his music background. He actually told me he loved bebop and that he had spent quite some time listening and studying it. Of course, at the time I could not hear any of that influence in his playing. But to make a long story short, the years went by and I forgot all about that conversation. That is, until later in the 90s when I first heard John's recordings with Joe DeFrancesco and Alvin Jones, and his acoustic albums, his tribute to Bill Evans, and of course, Thieves and Poets, which is one of my favorite albums. On these recordings, I finally heard clear evidence that John had at some point spent a considerable amount of time listening and studying the great jazz masters of the past. And this was the first time I heard him in a mainstream jazz setting and playing over some of the same standards I myself played. But I must confess that his lightning chops have always intimidated me and so I never ventured to try and transcribe his lines. That is until recently. So if you're like me, a bebop oriented player who has always admired John McLaughlin, but felt his stuff had absolutely no place in your solos when playing standards, this lesson might just change that. The first eight licks are off John's solo on the Dolphin, a classic bossa nova off the Thieves and Poets album. I have transposed all 18 licks in this lesson to start on a C root. This will make it much easier for you to learn, analyze, and easily compare them. So to play these uh, licks, I'm gonna set my metronome here at 85 beats per minute, which is relatively slow, but then again, I'm not John McLaughlin, and I want you to be able to hear each note in these licks distinctively. So here goes the first one. Three, four. Okay, uh, there's an interesting uh, G flat seven arpeggio within this uh, C seven altered chord, and it's and all that is is the uh, tritone substitute of C, which is G flat seven, of course, and that means that we can also use this lick over G flat seven. If you begin to wonder how on earth these licks are going to fit over a jazz standard, I want you to know that next week I will be posting a second part to this lesson in which I will show you how I apply these licks to any standard. Lick number two, also from the same album, Thieves and Poets. One, two, three, four. And uh, interesting motif here. It starts on the flat at 13. And then it continues. You hear that? So if we were to start it on the root, the initial or note motif would be like this. Now, if we're gonna create a sequence and develop it throughout the whole scale, it would be. This one is simply a variation of the previous one. One, two, three, four, one. Lick number four, also from the dolphin. One, two, three, four. Lick number five. 
Take number five. One, two, three, four. Lick number six, also from the dolphin, now introduces a C minor chord. One, two, three, four. Ah, that one uh, features uh, a few enclosures. For example, you can see here the arrows. First, we enclose the uh, flatted three. Then we enclose the uh, root, the one. Then we enclose the uh, five. And finally, we enclose the uh, flatted three again. And this motif, if we include the uh, previous note before the each enclosure is... It's what I like to call the Mona Lisa motif. Lick number seven, also from the Dolphin, and also features a C minor chord. One, two, three, four, one, two. And uh, this one is targeting every other chord tone from above in half steps, so we're targeting the flat three from above. We're targeting the flat seven from above chromatically. We're targeting the fifth with the flatted six. And we're targeting the final nine. Lick number eight, also from the dolphin featuring a uh, C minor chord. One, two, three, four. Now that sounds like something out of Star Trek, to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> I hope you are enjoying this lesson, and if so, I recommend that you download the special study package I've put together for this and the second part of this lesson. And it features a multi-page PDF with regular notation and tab of all the examples in this two-part lesson, plus the standard that I will show you in part two. Also, MP3s of all the examples and band in a box files of all the licks and, of course, the standard we will work on in part two. And you can download all of this for a very small contribution. Just visit jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium and you'll find the link under transcriptions. Lick number nine. This one's also off of the album Thieves and Poets, but it's from John Solo on Stella by Starlight. And this one's over a C minor major seven chord. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, that basically is a uh, descending harmonic minor scale. And it features a sixth uplet and um, if you want to know more about how to play uh, sextuplets and quintuplets, which we will also see later on, I have a video that you should check out. You should be seeing a little thumbnail right now. I will put a link to it in the info section down below. Lick number 10 is also from this same uh, solo. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Lick number 11, also from Stella by Starlight, from over C minor again. One, two, three, four. That one's a little tricky because it has a quintuplet, and that is played. Lick number 12 is also from Stella by Starlight, but from a different recording. And this is actually from a video 
on YouTube where John McLaughlin is playing a live duet with Birelli Lagreen. And I want to credit Edward Bobrashev for the original transcription. I've actually um, transposed it here to C for easy comparison, like I said initially. One, two, three, four. Ooh, that's tough. Lick number 13 also includes a uh, couple of sextuplets, or sextuplets, sextuplets. I like sextuplets better. <laughs> and this one's over a C minor 7 flat 5, and it can also be played over in A flat 7. Three, four. And this one has a motif, the first four notes. And then it goes and develops it. And finally. So you see the motif being varied. could do this anywhere with any scale. There it is over an altered chord, a C altered chord. Lick number 14, also from this same uh, video over Stella by Starlight, and this is one of the hardest ones as it has two quintuplets and the first one is tied to an eighth note. One, two, three, four. Lick number 15. This time it's over a C major seventh chord, and it's a set of two sex stoplets. Three, four. So we see a uh, a couple of uh, enclosures here. First one to the uh, seven, and then to the three. Lick number 16 is off of the uh, live recording a Night in San Francisco, Aldi Miola, John McLaughlin, and Paco de Lucia, and this is uh, from John Solo on Frevo, and it's a 2-5, C minor 7 flat 5, and F7 flat 9. 3, 4. And this one seems to have some, uh, some of that Indian raga influence in the uh, initial motif. Lick number 17, and this one's also from the same piece, Frevo, and this one's over a C minor chord. Three, four. And lick number 18, this is also from the album A Night in San Francisco, uh, but this one's from Guardian Angel. One, two, three, four. Like I said at the beginning, in part two, I will teach you how to apply these licks over a standard. And even though they work over a swing tune because of the predominant 16th note feel, they work even better over ballads or a bossa nova. So I've decided to show you how to apply them over blue bossa, which is a short progression I believe most of you are familiar with. So be on the lookout for it. Meanwhile, I would be grateful if you take a moment to like and comment on this video. And if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel and you enjoyed this lesson, please be sure to subscribe. Until we meet again, here's another video I think you'll enjoy. Stay safe and may peace be with you. Hasta la vista.